APCO Educational Topic Number 44, Hirsutism and Virilization. Hirsutism occurs in 7% of women. It has an estimated economic burden of $600 million annually. Hirsutism and virilization can cause significant emotional distress for our patients. The objectives are to recognize normal variations and abnormalities in secondary sexual characteristics. To define hirsutism and virilization, describe the pathophysiology and identify etiologies of hirsutism, describe the steps in the evaluation and initial management options for hirsutism and virilization, and finally describe how hirsutism and virilization are manifested in other medical disorders. Let's start with some basic definitions of hirsutism and virilization. Hirsutism is excess terminal hair in a male pattern of distribution. Terminal hair is dark and coarse versus vellus hair, which is soft, downy, and fine. Prior to puberty, all hair is vellus. When androgen levels rise during puberty, vellus follicles in specific areas of the body develop into terminal hairs. With hirsutism, terminal hair first appears on the lower abdomen, around the nipples, chin, and upper lip. Pictorial scales, such as the Ferrum and Galway scale, have been created to help objectify normal versus abnormal amounts of hair growth. Each of the nine body areas most sensitive to androgen are assigned a score from zero of no hair to four of frankly virile. These are summed to provide a hormonal hirsutism score. It is important to note that different ethnic groups will have different amounts of normal hair growth and distributions. Some experts have recommended using the term patient-important hirsutism to indicate symptoms that are causing patient distress. Hirsutism causes. 50% are idiopathic, which will be often constitutional or familial. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS, is the most common pathological cause. Other causes include congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Virilization refers to masculinization of a woman. Women will present with enlargement of the clitoris, temporal balding, deepening of the voice, involution of the breasts, and remodeling of the limb shoulder girdle. Let's now move to androgen production in women. There are three primary androgens that are produced in women, dehydroepiandrosterone, or DHEA, androstenedione, and testosterone. These are produced by the adrenal glands, ovaries, and peripheral tissues. DHEA is primarily secreted by the adrenal glands and ovaries. Let's very quickly revisit the cortisol synthesis pathway. Remember that in the adrenal gland, cholesterol is converted to aldosterone and cortisol. DHEA is one of the precursor hormones in this pathway. We'll go back to this cortisol synthesis pathway later in the video. Going back to our three primary androgens, androstenedione is equally secreted by the adrenal glands and the ovaries. Testosterone is a potent androgen that is secreted from the adrenal glands, ovaries, and from peripheral tissues. Testosterone is the primary androgen that causes increased hair growth and physical changes associated with virilization. Let's now move on to etiologies for androgen excess. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS, is the most common pathological cause for women presenting with hirsutism. Remember that this is a clinical diagnosis. The diagnosis involves menstrual irregularity, clinical or biochemical signs of hyperandrogenism, polycystic ovaries on ultrasound, here is a classic polycystic ovary with the small follicles around the periphery of the ovary measuring less than 9 millimeters. This is referred to as the ring of pearls. Different organizations have different criteria for the diagnosis of PCOS, but most groups endorse that the diagnosis can be made if a patient has two out of three of these criteria. There should also be exclusion of other causes of androgen excess or ovulatory disorders. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is often associated with obesity, and many women will describe that the acquisition of body fat coincides with the onset of PCOS symptoms. Women will describe situations such as changing to a sedentary job, gaining weight in college, or having a baby. Why is PCOS related to obesity? Remember that the pituitary gland secretes LH, which stimulates the colluteal cells in the ovary to produce androstenedione. In adipose tissue, this androstenedione is converted to estrone, which is a weak estrogen, which positively stimulates the pituitary to secrete more LH. The increased LH stimulation leads to more androstenedione. The androstenedione is converted to testosterone, which leads to acne and hirsutism. I think the important thing to remember is that estrone is a positive stimulator of LH. Let's move now to more uncommon causes of hyperandrogenism. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia accounts for 1.5 to 2.5% of women with hyperandrogenism. These enzyme deficiency disorders cause substrate excess, which result in androgen excess. Here again is our simplified version of the cortisol synthesis pathway. Cholesterol is converted to aldosterone and cortisol. 
a 21 hydroxylase deficiency or 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency will lead to increased levels of DHEA for this is one of the substrates in the pathway. Ovarian neoplasms are rare causes of high androgen levels, accounting for approximately 0.2% of women with hyperandrogenism. Sertoli Leydig tumors are ovarian neoplasms that secrete testosterone. These tumors constitute 0.4% of ovarian tumors. They usually occur in women between the ages of 20 and 30, and women will describe rapid onset of acne, hirsutism, amenorrhea, and virilization. Other medical conditions to include on the differential diagnosis of high androgen levels include Cushing syndrome, hypoprolactinemia, acromegaly, and thyroid dysfunction. Let's move now to evaluation of hirsutism. First, start with a careful history. Assess how rapidly the symptoms have developed, for a rapid pace of development should raise concerns about an androgen-secreting neoplasm. The high frequency of polycystic ovarian syndrome warrants attention to menstrual regularity. Ask about virilization symptoms such as voice changes, and ask about the hair patterns of family members. Remember to ask about medications and supplements as well. On physical examination, a ferriman galway score should be calculated, and make sure to perform an abdominal and bimanual examination to assess for abdominal and pelvic tumors, and a careful skin examination to check for acne, striae, or acanthosis nigricans. In addition, make sure to look for virilization signs such as enlargement of the clitoris, temporal balding, or involution of the breasts. The history and physical examination can help you determine if the patient is low, moderate, or high risk of having an androgen-secreting tumor. For a low-risk patient, therapy can be initiated with a six-month trial of hormonal therapy, such as oral contraception. For moderate to high-risk patients, hormonal evaluation and imaging should be ordered. Further workup to consider includes thyroid function tests, prolactin and 17-hydroxyprogesterone levels for further evaluation for other medical etiologies of hyperandrogenism. Let's conclude by discussing treatment. Hair removal methods include bleaching, shaving, epilation, which is waxing or plucking, electrolysis or laser. Pharmacologic measures include eflornithine hydrochloride, which is a cream which has recently been approved for the treatment of facial hirsutism. Oral contraception works by suppressing plasma testosterone levels by inhibiting ovarian function. And finally, the anti-androgen medications of spironolactone and finasteride. This concludes the APCO video on hirsutism and virilization. We've defined important terms, described pathophysiology, and described steps in the evaluation and initial management of these conditions.